Welcome back. You know, in uh, this journey of Lent, we as a church have often challenged ourselves to give up something that is precious and important. But this year, we at uh, West Highlands United Methodist Church are challenging ourselves not to give up something, but to take on something. We, we've chosen to focus this six weeks of preparation uh, for the celebration of Easter around five holy habits, five spiritual disciplines that, that sow faith into the, our very souls, that, that help that faith to sink deep and to give us strength to face the challenges that life brings. We've, we've talked about worship and prayer, about connection, about connecting points, and about how connecting with God in Jesus Christ gives us life. And so we've decided that five times every day, at least, we're gonna make a habit of connecting with God in prayer. We've talked about study. Uh, and study is paying attention, paying attention to the rhythm of our lives, paying attention to the places that life takes us, the people that, that life brings across our path and ask ourselves, what is it in all of this that God is saying to us? Help us to pay attention a moment by moment as we walk our way through life's journey asking always, what, what would God have me learn from this? What would God say to me about this experience and this time and this place and this person? And we've turned to God's word and, and said, we, we will be people who, who look at five verses every day because God's word is precious. Because scripture is that precious, wondrous place where, where we find the fullness of God, God's intention, our purpose explained to us in ways that, that give us life, uh, that, that fill our sails with the Spirit's presence. And so we've said we'll take just a few moments every day to look at God's Word. I hope, I hope that as you've been journeying through Lent. You have found, as I have, that, that those regular connecting points have become something you look forward to. First thing in the morning, opening your eyes and, and greeting God towards the evening as the day is slipping away. Look back over that day and, and look to God and connect. And three other times during the day, just check in. I hope that, that you're finding that look at God's word, at the scriptures to be life-giving. I find myself uh, drawn back to the Psalms, to those poems, to those lyrics, and, and just let them sing into my soul. Uh, words of encouragement, words of challenge, uh, words from sometimes the depths of despair that, that somehow connect us with the wonder of God's presence with us. We've talked about not only connecting and not only paying attention and, and growing our understanding, but we've talked about serving, about actually doing some things. And, and we reflected on Ephesians, that, that place there in the second chapter of the 10th verse, where Paul says that we are created to do good works. That's part of who we are. And, I, and I've been looking this last week for five ways to do something kind for other folks. I've discovered that sometimes uh, those ways can't come as, as disruptions to the flow of my life, that phone call in the midst of my study, that knock at the door uh, in the midst of my pondering, that uh, interruptions. And at first, I, I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant. Uh, but, you know, as I give myself to the needs of other folks, I, I am finding a, a blessing and, and encouragement. I, I, I feel like I'm making a difference 
for someone else, and, and it's a great blessing to me. Well, today I want to talk about a fourth holy habit. I want to talk about giving and generosity. And, and you may say that sounds like a very strange topic, Pastor. In the midst of the journey that we're on in our nation and our world, as this COVID-19 seems to be wreaking havoc, not only, not only with us physically, uh, as folks are growing very ill, and, and, and all too many uh, are, are dying in the midst of their sickness, but, but, but it's wreaking havoc with the fabric of our lives. It's bringing out the worst in us as those lines at the grocery stores uh, and the toilet paper disappearing of all things and bottled water just becoming scarce. Uh, our 401ks are spiraling downward along with the economy and we may find ourselves wondering will we have a job uh, next week, next month? Businesses are, are laying off personnel. The restaurants are closing. It's a challenging time, Pastor, to be talking about giving. It seems awkward and almost inappropriate, but you know, giving and generosity was something that Jesus talked about more than he talked about anything else. He talked about giving and generosity more than he talked about faith and prayer and study put together because Jesus understood that we, as we journey through this life, would be faced again and again and again. Uh, that we would be torn uh, between our pocketbooks uh, and, and our hearts. And Jesus' prayer for those who followed after him, people like you and I, is that in the end, the heart would win the heart would win. Jesus talked about giving and generosity in terms of our, of our time, in terms of our talent, and, and yes, in terms of the resources that God had provided for us. He talked about it because he understood, I think, that just as doing good things deeds as doing kind things for other people was, was part of the way God wired us. Giving and generosity were in the nature of, of these human creatures that God had created. It's part of who we are. Nowhere is that illustrated any better than in a study that a guy named Rob Bliss did a few years back. He took a group of eight and nine year olds and he asked them two questions. He asked them first, if you could have anything you want for Christmas, what would it be? Well, the responses came back, oh, a new computer. That, that would be just great. Uh, an Xbox, well, that would be swell. Hey, if I could have anything, I'd like a big Barbie dollhouse. Well, then Bliss asked them, so tell me about your parents. What do you think more than anything else they would want for Christmas? The children came back with answers like, oh, I, th I, think, I think a new car. I think a new car. Oh, I think my mom would love to have a ring. I've heard her say so many times. She's never had a ring. I, I think my mom would like a ring. My dad has always wanted a watch. One of those gold watches. Well, Bliss and his assistants watched their eyes just open wide as they set before each of these children that very thing that they had dreamed they might get for Christmas. And then he brought out and, and, and put beside them that thing that they had said their parents would dream of finding in their Christmas stocking or under the Christmas tree. And he challenged the children that they could have one, the one they had chosen for themselves, 
or the other, the one that they had said their parents would want more than anything else. Believe it or not, every one of those children in Bliss's study chose the gift that their parents would prize. When asked why, they said, mom and dad work so hard, they deserve it. My mom's always there when I'm sick and lonely and tears are running down my face. Dad works so hard to provide so that I can be happy. I, I'd like to see him happy too. Jesus understood uh, what those children, children seem to know. That true happiness is found not in giving to ourselves, uh, but in giving to others. Jesus also understood, I think, that it is in giving and generosity to others that we leave a legacy, that we leave a legacy. Stories told of uh, stained glass windows that uh, adorned the chapel at the Coeur d'Alene Community United Methodist Church. Many of them formed the back wall uh, of what was the, the back of the sanctuary in, in the old church on 7th in uh, near downtown Coeur d'Alene. There, a window that was donated by a man who owned a steamship company. He'd accumulated a great deal of wealth with a whole fleet of steamships that, that puffed their way up and down the lake and up and down the St. Joe River into the Silver Valley to carry goods and services, to carry the mail, uh, to carry groceries, to people in the mining district and to carry those riches, those great resources down the river and across the lake and then out across this great land of ours. But as this man grew older, that fortune that he'd accumulated began to slip away as the steamships gave way to railroads and the railroads began to give way to trucks and highways. And he ended his life the last few years in a little one-room apartment in a rooming house just a few blocks from the church. Often he would travel those few blocks and sit in the back of the sanctuary and just, just gaze at this window that he had given when he seemed to have everything that money could buy. Someone asked him one day what he was doing and and, and why he had come, and, and he said, uh, you know, life's a funny thing. I find as I grow older that the, the only things that I have left are the things that I've given away. Things like that window that still points me toward the God who gave me breath but not only me, has shown countless others the wonder and the joy of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Giving's in our nature. Jesus understood that. It's the way God created us because, because it's the way we find the contentment that we've always wanted. It's, it's the way we leave a legacy. Paul understood that. Paul understood that, and, and he wanted his young preachers to know that. And so when, when he set out to write words of encouragement and guidance to his preachers, among those words were some words that he shared with Timothy toward the end of the letter, his first letter to Timothy. Paul wrote these words. Let me read them for you. Timothy, tell people who are rich at this time not to become egotistical and not to place their hope on their finances, which are uncertain. Instead, they need to hope in God, who richly provides everything for our enjoyment. Tell them to do good, to be rich in the good things they do, to be generous and to share with others. 
when they do these things. They will save a treasure for themselves that is a good foundation for the future. That way, they can take hold of that which is truly life. That way, they can take hold of that which is truly life. You see, giving and generosity is, is like a boomerang. The energy with which we rear back and fling it from us, sharing with those in, in our world, sharing with this church we have come to love, is, is the same velocity with which that boomerang will come sailing back in our direction. Do you want to be all that God dreamed you might become? Uh, then you'll be a person of connection, a person who gives themselves to worship and to prayer. You'll be a person who learns to pay attention, who looks each day at all that comes your way, who looks to God's word and asks, in all of this, Lord, what have you for me? What is there here that, that feeds my soul and my spirit? You'll be one who learns to serve others, to do random acts of kindness that bring blessing, uh, not, not to yourself, uh, not, not to point attention to yourself, but to lift up and encourage others, to allow God's work to continue strong and true and healthy. And you'll be among those who sow into, into, into the soil of your spirit generosity, gifts that make a difference, not, not for you, but for the work God is doing, for the others whom God has created. Because, because that's the person that God always dreamed you might become. Thank you.